All right. So today we're going to talk about integration of vector-valued functions. Um, pretty, uh, pretty easy extension from from what we did, what we did before. Uh, we just want to want to make sure that we that we understand what we're what we're talking about when we're when we're integrating, when we're, we're defining the derivative and the integral of vector-valued function. And then what we're going to do is, for the rest of the chapter, we're going to talk about um, velocity, acceleration, uh, and curvature. And curvature, I think, is is one of is is a really really cool topic that we get to talk about this this semester. It's it's leads into some really interesting interesting ideas, d interesting ways of looking at functions. So we're going to integrate vector value functions. And because of the way we defined, defined the derivative of the vector value function, uh, and we can uh, take the derivative component by component, we, we can say if um, for, for our vector valued function, if we have r of t, the this, this way we've been talking about these so far is um, f of ti plus g of t. What's that? So, so here's our, here's our position vector, and we have, so we have our, our position vector, and f, g, and h are continuous on some interval. We're, we're going to our, our integral, if we integrate our indefinite integral of r of t, we just integrate component by component. We just have the integral of f of t dt i plus the integral of g of t dt j plus integral of h of t dt k. So, so just like in, in single variable calculus, we're, to, we're just going, going the opposite direction from our, from our derivative. And we can, we can integrate uh, component by component to get the integral of our vector valued function. And if we do the, if we want to take the definite integral over our, over our interv interval, it's the same, same thing. We just add our, our limits of integration. But we have to be a little careful here, and this, is, this trips a lot of people up. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we need to be careful on this first one. Our constant of integration is a vector. So let me, I'm going to erase this for now. So our constant of integration is a vector for the indefinite integral. So that puts a little, a little bit of a wrinkle in, in finding indefinite integrals of vector value functions. You're not finding a scalar, you're finding a vector constant. And, and we'll, we'll run into this a little later when we're, solving, um, when we're solving differential equations and we're dealing with vectors. Um, so our, our definite integral, we just apply our, our limits to, to our integral and it takes exactly the same form. So we'll just write that up. We just integrate term by term. So 
so this is the this is the the process of finding the finding the the integral of a vector valued function and I want to make sure that I I, I want to re-emphasize this point the integral of r of t dt equals capital R of t plus some constant vector. So the indef when we have the indefinite integral, our constant of integration is a vector, and our prime of t equals r of t. So this 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 will come back uh, a little later in the in the semester. Now what I want to do, I'm not going to do any, um, we're not going to do any examples of taking the, ta finding the integral of a vector value function. We're going to do some, some true or false questions. Yeah, Caitlin. Um, so like, when you think of integral as to have a plus b, uh -huh. do you just put a plus b on the end or for each term with the addition? Well, the, the, c, the c would be, I could say that c is, we could say it's c1 i plus c2 okay. j plus c3 k. Right. Okay. So there's going to be some some part of the constant that, that's going to have an i, j, and a k component. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, but that, that that's a good question. So we have to we have to make sure we get the, the constant for each each component. Okay? Um, so our true or false questions are in your, in your book on page 847. <laughs> 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 All right, are we on page, um, are we on page 847? Um, so we want, to, we want to figure out true or false for these. And um, if they're false, if it's true, you want to, you want to give an explanation. If it's false, you want to give, give a, a counterexample. So number 83 asks us, says a particle moving on a sphere centered at the origin. Um, and it says the derivative vector is tangent to the sphere. So we're, we have a particle moving on a sphere and wants to know, true or false, is the derivative vector tangent to the sphere? Yes. Wait, the derivative vector at one point? At, and, at, at any point. At any point. At any point on the part, the particle's moving along the sphere. So at any point where the particle's moving, is the derivative vector going to be tangent to the sphere? Yes. So we say yes. Can anybody give give an explanation, what, what would happen if the derivative vector were not tangent to the sphere? What would that tell you about the motion of the particle? What did, what did you say, Scott? Inside or outside. So if the derivative vector is not tangent to the sphere, that would mean the particle then would be moving either towards the center or away from the center at that point, right? And then it wouldn't be on the surface of the sphere because a derivative vector is the, the derivative of the position vector is the velocity vector. And if its velocity is not tangent to the sphere, it's going to be moving either towards the origin or away from the origin. Does everybody see that? Yeah. OK. The definite integral of a vector valued function is a real number. False. Kate, well, Caitlin says false. So the, the, the definite integral yeah, of a vector valued function is a real number. Yeah. OK. 
Got a, some I don't knows, a couple of trues, a couple of sort of head nods. The question, the definite integral of a vector valued function is a real number. All right, Danny now says false, Charles says false. What, why, why do you say false? So Charlie says, because it's a vector, not a real number. Isn't that what we just said? Yeah. Uh, let's I go. didn't know if vectors were considered real numbers. That was the dilemma. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that was cool. You have like, the same two guys. Right. So this was, this was true. So let's go back one page. We said the definite integral is a, we end up with a vector. We have some, some uh, number times i plus some number times j plus some number times, uh, this should be a k. Some number times k. So our definite integral is a vector. And we talked about it before when we first started talking about vectors, and, and Emily thought it was a little strange. Even if it, our definite integral is 0, it's the 0 vector, not, as, not 0 number, 0 vector. And there's a difference between 0 number, 0 scalar, and 0 vector. All right, so this one is false because it's a vector. All right, the next one. This one's a little, little trickier. How is that one false? The derivative, let me write it up here so we, we're sure what, of what we're talking about. So number 85, the derivative of the magnitude of R of t does that equal the, deriv the magnitude of the derivative? This was on our homework. Was it? So, so this is asking for, for all vector value functions, is the derivative of the magnitude equal to the magnitude of the derivative? Right, the magnitude could vary with time. The magnitude could be a function of time. So we have a couple of falses. Uh, can you give a can you give a counterexample? So so the derivative, the derivative of the magnitude. What is that? What is that telling you about the about the function? Just it, not not even in terms of the form of the function. But what does it tell you about that that vector value function? If the derivative of the magnitude, um, right? So we're just we're wondering. Caitlin says, is that only the length and not the direction? The derivative of the magnitude tells you how the length of the vector is changing. So ddt of the magnitude of r of t is, is asking how the length of the vector is changing. What does the, the magnitude of the derivative tell you? So think, think about, think about, uh, think about single variable calculus. Magnitude, what's, if you're thinking of motion, what is the, what is the magnitude of the derivative? Speed. So the first derivative is asking us how is the length of the vector changing? The second, the second term is how is the speed changing? So they may not be the same thing. Can anyone think of an example of where the magnitude of the vector 
that's describing the motion is constant, but the, um, the speed, I'm sorry, the, where the magnitude, the, 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 the change in the magnitude is zero. So the, the length of the vector is not changing, but the speed is changing. There we go. Good. Very good. In, in circular motion, in uniform circular motion, if something's going around in a circle at a constant speed, the, the magnitude of the, the velocity vector, or I'm sorry, the magnitude of the position vector is not changing because it's going around in a circle. I'm sorry, so, so the derivative would be zero because the magnitude of the vector is constant. So the derivative of the magnitude would be zero, but the speed, the second one, the derivative of r of t is not, is not zero. So that, that would be where these are not, would not be equal. So this would be false. And our counterexample would be uh, uniform circular motion. Um, <clears throat> and number eighty, number eighty-six. This is asking us: Is the derivative of R of t dot u of t, does that equal uh, the derivative of r prime, the derivative of r dot the derivative of u? Is that true or false? Scott says false. And it's false. Why is it false? There's a property that's like r dot e prime plus r prime dot. Right. So we have to use a uh, a kind of a dot product product rule. So false. Uh, this actually equals r of t dot u prime plus r prime of t. dot u of t. All right. Questions? OK. That's all we're talking about today. All right, there you go.